Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I continue my testing of Venture Star, my model of Venture Star at least, and primarily in response to comments from X33 Archive, I have changed some numbers around and adjusted the OMS engines and RCS ports. Uh, first of all, the OMS engines and RCS ports no longer use hypergolic propellants. They are going to use hydrogen and oxygen even though Hydrolox RCS hasn't actually been developed, <laughs> so that's a little bit hard. OMS engines are doable. Uh, those are the small engines that we have here and another one on the opposite side here. Uh, those will do our orbital maneuvers. And they have the same thrust as I had before, basically AJ10190 thrust, but they use hydrogen and oxygen at 425 seconds of ISP in vacuum. The RCS is assumed to be Hydrolox RCS, so it can get about 400 seconds ISP and the other option would be to have hydrogen gas RCS which would give 260 seconds of ISP. Uh, I decided not to go with the hydrogen, hydrogen gas thrusters because that's more complicated. Now then we broached the thrust issue with the RS2200s and basically every time I see the thrust numbers they have a very tight range when it comes to the sea level and vacuum numbers. Basically the sea level uh, number and vacuum number are about 15% in every estimate, whether it was from X33 Archive or whether it was my own information uh, from PDFs and searching the web and stuff like that. But the ISP, the efficiency, the specific impulse, had a much wider difference between sea level and vacuum, normally about 30%. So the sea level was way less than the vacuum. This doesn't make any sense because there is a set relationship between thrust and uh, specific impulse. Basically, thrust equals mass flow rate times the, uh, the exhaust velocity. Exhaust velocity is specific impulse multiplied by 9.81. So, yeah, well, I mean, it depends on your units, but let's set that aside for now. But the point is that once you set the mass flow rate constant, which we can do because normally these numbers are not cited for a throttled engine, it's assumed to be 100% throttle, so we can assume that the mass flow rate is constant and we take that out, basically the thrust and ISP can be set equal to each other. And if it's less thrust at uh, sea level, it should be less by the same general rate. There are little asterisks here and there but the same general rate uh, for the specific impulse. So I have assumed that. And basically I have assumed that they were lying about the specific impulse at sea level. So I have adjusted the sea level specific impulse to give it the amount that it would have based on the sea level thrust that it ought to have. And adjusted it like that. So getting more efficiency at sea level, we do in fact get 20 tons to orbit instead of having all the struggles I had in the previous video. It's not a huge uh, home run or anything like that. Uh, basically we barely get to orbit with enough to come back down. So it seems about right really. Uh, well I mean I have to alter that a little bit. I did increase the mass of the body but partly based on information that X33 Archive had though. The, those numbers that X33 Archive had uh, were based on a later version of Venture Star. I'm going with an earlier version of Venture Star, in particular one that has seven engines in the back. Uh, apparently there was a version with eight engines in the back. We're not doing that version. Uh, we have seven engines in the back. We have slightly less thrust uh, than some variants, slightly less uh, takeoff mass than some variants, but they seem to change the numbers a lot. What I haven't changed yet is the thickness of the body. It seems like it ought to be thicker and I haven't removed the cockpit yet, but it seems like it probably ought not to have one. So yeah, for now I'm not doing anything with the model. We are just testing the numbers. So I have already tested the launch to see that it can get to orbit. That's how I know that we got to orbit with a little bit extra, uh, just enough to get back. And this time we are going to check the re-entry. I did get to try out the re-entry once during a live stream, but it did not survive. So I have adjusted the location of center mass and center lift a little bit, 
and we will see how that works. Basically, we're moving it within the space of one meter, so it's a little bit touchy. Okay, so here it is on the pad, and we are going to go SAS on, throttle up, ignition. And launch. We do have the wing surfaces locked right now. They are all moving in this case. It is fairly laggy because each of the chambers has its own plume, and so we have a total of 98 plumes. And I'm still using real plume. Probably it performed better with waterfall. We do have 20 tons in the bay, and we will let go of it once we get to orbit. That's the av gas up here. So I'll have an updated version of this in the video des description, but, um, well, maybe you will want to use the one of hypergolic fuels, who knows, because this needs some uh, extra MLI layers and all that. I've noticed that if you try and put too many MLI layers, that's multi-layer insulation to keep the hydrogen and oxygen from boiling off, if you put too many of them, it has a mass glitch where it suddenly adds an extra 100 tons of mass for some reason. So I recommend keeping the MLI layers down to about 20 and watch out for the mass glitch. You will not get to orbit like that. And again, there's only two degree of gimbal on the engines. Those are basically the little nozzles gimbling. And so we use a lot of pitch authority. That's really supposed to be differential thrust, but I didn't have an easy way of implementing differential thrust. Of course, that can be possible with other mods, but I'm not gonna require that. I do have an alternate idea for the crew, and that's to have sort of a ejectable pod in the cargo bay. Going to X33 Archive, there would be a, they they would have just carried a pod externally from the get-go, but I think a, sort of an ejectable pod from the cargo bay would be more interesting. It could be placed on top of it as a piggyback module too. Could go either way. Okay, and shut down, 246 by 172, we have 180 meters per second left. I'll try and raise the periapsis at apoapsis before ejecting the payload. We should probably start the fuel cell though. We do have one built in. And I'll get these shut down and start up the OMS and RCS. Okay, boosting up. We've still got the old plumes on the OMS system though. Okay, that should be good enough to send out the payload. So we'll sort of move ourselves away from it. That leaves us with 160 meters per second now. I'll continue to apoapsis. this. I do want to sort of circularize this at about an hour and a half orbital period, which is a standard orbit for my shuttle re-entry script. So I will get to use that to control this thing's re-entry, hopefully. So with the payload, we basically add a dry mass that is without the fuel of uh, about 130 tons with the payload, and it's about 110 tons without. Okay, that's one and a half hours. So we will go around a few times, wait a day basically. Okay, let's see if we can get this going. It's not that different from the shuttle, hopefully. Uh, this is not the direction it ought to be in. Okay, I don't think the script is working right. Well, I think I'm gonna try skipping the beginning part of the script 
and just activate it once we hit the atmosphere. We'll see if that works better. Okay, well I'm gonna cut it off with 50 meters per second left in the delta V. We'll get it the right orientation with Smart ASS and then switch it to KOS. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, we'll see. Okay, and I will activate our wing surfaces. Make sure those are ready to go. Alright, I'll take it off of Smart ASS and try KOS. Feel like it's not very good at controlling this vehicle's RCS though. Yeah, I don't know why. I I think it's better not to use it. It doesn't seem to be doing what I want it to do. Oh, Fizz Warp is definitely not good. Alright, we're going to have to wait for it the hard way. Okay, we are below 100 kilometers and we're using a bit of pitch. Only have 42 meters per second to work with and that's measuring from the OMS specific impulse, not the RCS specific impulse. So it's a bit tight, we'll see. Uh, it's getting a little bit wiggly now. Let me see... well, attitude adjustment is really low, so it's just gonna be wiggly. So far our flight path looks fine. Probably we would overshoot Cape Canaveral right now. We'll see what kind of drag we get. Well, we're running out of RCS propellant in a hurry. Uh, I tried to turn the RCS off to see if we had enough with just the control surfaces and the answer is no. Uh, uh, I don't know if I can bring it back down. The RCS is not phenomenally weak or anything. It's about the level of the spatial RCS. Oh, shoot. Well, at least it's spinning with the heat shield side towards the airflow. Oh, maybe it's not. <laughs> maybe let's not speak too soon. Oh, uh, 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 not quite. Almost seemed to be getting it there. It always ends up this way, doesn't it? First few tests. We're stalled out, obviously. Oh, come on, plane. Prograde vector, please. Well, that's not working out. Okay, well, changes have been made, but that the changes aren't quite sufficient. So, well, at least we can get to orbit with a payload and everything, but work still needs to be done. Uh, well, what can I say? The struggle continues. So, yes, we have made some changes that will make life easier. Uh, some of them might be a little bit optimistic depending on how you look at the specific impulse and whether Hydrolox RCS is a thing or not. But for now I'll leave it here and I will continue to try to refine this and cook up an uh, improved KOS script for it. But for now I'm going to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.